So the question is, uh, what are the major challenges in the diagnosis of myasthenia gravis? Uh, it really has to do with the uh, various factors. One of the important uh, one and that pose some difficulty in making the diagnosis are the early stages of myasthenia. When patients present with symptoms, some of them can be vague, uh, um, fatigue, uh, uh, weakness, uh, which is subjective. Uh, they can have symptoms of uh, droopy eye or double vision, and they may seek other specialists, so they get other diagnoses. Uh, they can be uh, sort of as having some kind of a, of a stroke, for example, when they present initially with only double vision or some other uh, uh, symptoms, so they end up with a variety of uh, uh, diagnostic studies. Uh, the other challenge has to do with the uh, antibody issue. So n not all patients with myasthenia gravis are antibody positive to the acetylcholine receptors, 85% uh, of are positive, 15% are not. And there are newer antigens that have been discovered in myasthenia and newer antibodies that can now be assayed. Uh, also, in ocular myasthenia gravis, the incidence of antibody positivity is close to 50%. So again, patients may be negative in terms of uh, the antibody. So these are the various issues in terms of phenotype and serotype that can pose some challenges. Uh, and the diagnosis. So the limitations of glucocorticoid and immunosuppressive treatment and the treatment of myasthenia gravis uh, are basically due to issues related, uh, as far as corticosteroid, for example, adverse effect because patient with myasthenia is on long-term treatment of corticosteroids, and some of the adverse effects can be managed, some cannot be managed or cannot be avoided. And uh, they can be quite serious adverse effects, weight gain, uh, diabetes, hypertension, uh, uh, skin uh, bruisability, uh, um, uh, issues uh, with the, like, aseptic necrosis of the hip. But, you know, we can go, I mean, the list is huge. Corticosteroids work well. Uh, the main issue with it is that when patients reach what we call a minimal manifestation status or stable and you start tapering down the corticosteroids, the patient may worsen or may relapse. So there is all the time this battle between trying to taper corticosteroid and try to increase the dose. Uh, as far as the immunosuppressive medications, again, uh, none of them were validated in clinical trials. Uh, uh, although there have been individual trials done uh, and some trials were positive, but then confirmatory, confirmatory trials were not. Uh, the main issue is to do with the long uh, delayed onset of action. So some of them take two to three months for, it, for the medication to work and others take like 40, up to 14 months for it to work. Uh, hypersensitivity reaction needs for monitoring. Uh, teratogenic effect of some immunosuppressive medication. So again, while well, it's desirable in myasthenia gravis to really have a quick uh, onset of action of a given medication, this is the major limitation of immunosuppressive treatment.